All right. Lessons five and six, continuity, discontinuity, and piecewise functions. Now, this is something that also comes up more in calculus, but Blythe includes it here, so it's party time. A function is continuous if there are no breaks in the graph. Again, if you move your pencil from left to right, you shouldn't have to lift your pencil away from the page in order to draw a continuous function. Almost all the functions that you've ever seen have been continuous. From lessons three and four, this is a continuous function because I can draw it all in one swoop of my pencil. This is continuous because it only takes one swoop of the pencil to do it. This would not be continuous because I have to draw this curve and then lift my pencil to draw the rest of this curve. I can't just connect the two. A function is discontinuous if you do have to lift the pencil, if there is a break in the graph. Now, hopefully that's super intuitive for you. These are the three types of discontinuities. <clears throat> we have what's called an infinite discontinuity or an asymptote in that at this value, x equals whatever that is, x equals negative three, it goes up to positive infinity here and down to negative infinity here, but you have to lift your pencil in order to draw those two curves separately. In fact, this curve has two infinite discontinuities because there's not only one vertical asymptote, but a second vertical asymptote. Horizontal asymptotes mean nothing for discontinuities because it's as you're moving your pencil from left to right. Again, infinite discontinuities is just a fancy word for asymptote. A jump discontinuity is something new for you. This line keeps going, keeps going, keeps going, keeps going, keeps going until we get to this point. Then there's a break and the line picks up somewhere else. Now, the equations for graphs like this end up being called piecewise functions, and they look like this. I'll show you what they look like. We'll draw some together in just a second. But they can result in jump discontinuities because you're just drawing a regular function, but then your pencil has to jump to another place and it just continues on from there. Again, you gotta lift your pencil so it's a discontinuity, not continuous. And then we have what's called a removable discontinuity in that it's so close to a continuous function. It's a regular line, which is continuous. You can just draw a line, right? But the problem is there's a hole in it somewhere. Do you remember what the open circle meant? It meant you can plug in any value near that, but you can't plug in that value exactly. This is x equals one. And if it weren't for that one tiny hole, this would have been a continuous function. That's why we call it a removable discontinuity. Now this graph might ring a bell for you based on lesson one. Lesson one had the exact same graph here. Removable discontinuities have a hole in the domain, as you might predict, because we have an open circle there. We can't plug x equals one in. But again, if we could, and that was closed, it would have been a continuous function. It was so close and yet so far. Anyways, uh, discontinuities happen most often when X is on the bottom of a function. You already know that because that's what results in an asymptote. And we've already agreed an asymptote is an infinite discontinuity. The other time discontinuities happen is when you have a piecewise function. Oh, I should also mention, when x is on the bottom of a function, you can also get rem these removable or whole discontinuities. In fact, you might remember that from rational functions in grade 11. But again, this lesson here is about piecewise functions and continuity. And piecewise functions are the ones that result in jump discontinuities. Let's talk about piecewise functions for a second, because for some reason, Blythe likes to do a big lesson about this. <clears throat> a piecewise function can be broken up into two different types of graphs, depending on what value of x you're talking about. To the left of two, 
this graph looks exactly like x squared minus three, a parabola. To the right of two, and actually also exactly at two, this function looks exactly like x minus one, which is a line. Let me help you draw that. I'll draw this one for you first, then you can take over. The graph of x squared minus three is a parabola that has its vertex at zero comma three. Now I'm gonna draw that whole parabola here just to emphasize that it is x squared minus three and the whole parabola does exist for x squared minus three. We only care about this parabola to the left of two and I'll show you what that means in just a second. But we also have x minus one here. That's a line with a y-intercept at negative one and a slope of one. Looks something like that problem. Now, let me get out a colored pencil here. Maybe pink would be a good color. To the left of two, only the parabola matters. And actually, only up to two, but not including two. Because there's no or equal to underneath this, we're gonna want an open circle. Now I have my parabola. So at x equals two, I have an open circle for the parabola. And I only care about the parabola from or to the left of that value. So the only part of the parabola that actually matters to me, because this is a piecewise function, and this part only applies if x is less than two, this is the only part of the parabola that actually matters. After that, starting at two and to the right, only the line matters. So I'm going to start here with a closed circle, closed circle because it's or equal to, and I'm gonna take only my line after that. This is now a piecewise function. I'm going to erase the part of the parabola that didn't matter, and I'm going to erase the part of the line that didn't matter. Now you know why we call them jump discontinuities. Because I was doing fine with my parabola, but then I had to jump somewhere else to get to my line. Piecewise functions are super easy to graph. Sorry about the focusing problem. The piecewise functions are easy to graph because you can graph this and you can graph that. And all you really need to be able to do is graph each of those and then highlight your graph on the proper interval. You highlight this graph to the left of two, you highlight that graph to the right of two. That's an open circle, that's a closed circle. Piece of cake, right? Yes, I agree. It is a piece of cake. Let's practice once more on the next page because I would be a terrible teacher if we didn't do examples. What do we have here? Oh, ha, huh, this is the same graph. I guess I didn't have to do it on the last page. Uh, practice it yourself again, if you want. Let's draw this piecewise function. Ooh, three. We're broken up into three different functions, but I can graph all of them because that's a parabola, that's a line, and that's a line. All right, you ready? Because I am. Now, again, graph all of them yourself. How do you graph a parabola? The vertex here is at zero comma three. And then I can use my step pattern to get more points. Over one, up one, over one, up three, over one, up five, I ran out of space. Over one, up one, over one, up three, and I'm gonna draw my parabola. Yeah, review of grade 11, Calca Part T. Now I also need this line. Now this isn't written the way you're probably used to. You're probably used to y equals negative four x plus three, but hey, that's the way the game goes. This is a line with a y-intercept at three. Oh, that shares that point, and a slope of negative four. What that means is I go down four, one, two, three, four, and over one to get my new point. Down four, one, two, three, four, over one, down one, two, three, four, over one. And I'm gonna draw my line through those points. Use a ruler. Uh, you just should. <laughs> and here we have another line, x minus 12. 
This starts at negative 12, which is actually way down here. And the slope is one. So it goes oh, up one, over one, up one, over one, up one, over one. Ah, another point shared. Up one, over one, up one, over one. Yeah, you get the point. And we can draw our line through those points as well. <clears throat> all right. So I've graphed my three curves. They don't all ever, they don't have to always meet, but uh, they happen to in this case. Now, what really matters is that you can highlight each of these graphs on the proper interval. To the left of zero, you highlight the parabola. And at zero, it's an open circle. So open circle at zero, and we highlight our parabola to the left of that. Check. Now, from zero to three, I'm going to highlight that first line that we drew. It's going to be a closed circle at zero and an open circle at three. Now, my closed circle at zero actually fills in the open circle. So there's no jump here. Remember, the jump is what you get when you have an open circle and it jumps to a closed circle. But my open circle and closed circle happened to be in the same place here. So there's no discontinuity. And I highlight this all the way over to x equals 3. And it's an open circle there because there's no or equal to here. Kind of get where I'm going with this. Highlighting the parabola to 0, highlighting the line between 0 and 3, and I'm going to highlight the other line to the right of 3. And that's or equal to. So I've got to start with a filled in circle. Hey. That also fills in the open circle there. Whoa, that's way, that's terrible coloring. And I highlight my graph there. Now again, just for good measure, I'm gonna erase the part of the parabola that doesn't matter. I'm gonna erase the parts of that line that don't matter. And I'm gonna erase the parts of that that don't matter. How messed up does this graph look? It is literally, and probably obviously, a parabola, then a line, then another line. But that's what makes it piecewise because each piece applies or each piece is a different function and it applies on a different interval. The reason piecewise functions are done the lesson after continuity is because this clearly resulted in a jump discontinuity whereas this happens to be a continuous function. You wouldn't know that it's continuous because it looks like a piecewise function. Those are often not continuous, just like the one that I just showed you. But uh, this one happens to be because at zero, this function meets this function. And at three, this function meets this function. It's not always going to happen, but Blythe can rig questions to uh, request that you figure that out somehow. You can do it with algebra. You can plug zero into this. Zero squared plus three gives three. And three minus four times zero is also three. If you plug zero into both and you get the same value out, that is another way to prove that it's not going to be a jump discontinuity. So by that logic, if I plug three in here, three minus four times three, that's three minus 12, that's negative nine, versus three minus 12, that's also negative nine. That also won't be a jump discontinuity, and lo and behold, it wasn't. But uh, that's doing it with algebra is possibly a little advanced for this course. I'm more worried that you can graph the piecewise functions by graphing parabolas and lines, maybe sine curves, and then just highlighting them as requested in the function itself. All right, that does it. That's your first six lessons from Blythe. Lesson seven is transformations, a review of grade 11. You're doing great. Keep it up. I believe in you.